I saw a quote recently that read, if you want to be in the top 1% of people, you need to be willing to do what the 99% aren't. And it got me thinking, what do the top 1% of GCSE and A-level students do? Firstly, why should we even bother being in the top 1%? Well, there's the obvious answer, which is if you're in the top 1%, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the top grade. For GCSEs, I think it's the top 5% of students that go into exam, achieve a 9. And for A-levels, I think it's the top 10% of students that get the A-star. So if you're in the top 1%, you're pretty much guaranteed to get that top grade. But besides that, being a top 1% student will benefit you outside of school as well. I'm a huge believer that our time in school will shape our character more than anything else. We learn social skills and communication from school. We even develop our personalities based off our friends in school. And we also learn the discipline and some of the skills required to succeed in life from school. So if you strive to become a top 1% student, just by association, you'll build up this incredible discipline and work ethic that will help you later on. Not to mention a healthy, positive lifestyle to match it, which can be applied at any time in the future. Put it simply, the discipline you build in school will form the foundation of your discipline later on. How do we actually become part of the top 1% of students? Let's get right into it. Like I said before, to be in the top 1%, you need to beat 99% of people. I want you to do this next time you go to school. Go to your common room or, or lunch hall or any large gathering of students in your school. Look around and ask yourself, am I doing more than 99% of these people? Is my studying technique more efficient? Am I putting in more hours? Is the rest of my lifestyle helping me become better than 99% of them? And don't answer yes unless you have straight 9s or A stars. Because if you were in the top 1%, your grades will reflect it. But if the answer is no, then we need to start doing what they're not willing to do. That starts with our studying technique. Sit down and reflect on how you learn. Is your studying technique optimized to be as efficient as possible? Do you use paced repetition and active recall? Or do you just passively study, like reading and highlighting your notes? Do you prioritize doing practice questions or do you just ignore them because they're too challenging? If you want to be part of the top 1%, you can't just study randomly. Every day when you plan to study, you need to know exactly what you're going to do when you sit down on your desk and study. It should be as follows. You know, today I'm going to sit down, I'm going to go through the syllabus of chapter 12 of physics, I'm going to make flashcards for all of the points. After that, I'll do practice questions for chapter 10 of biology to cement that content that I learned yesterday. When you do that, you're setting yourself goals, which you can then achieve. Instead of just sitting down and, and studying until you feel bored. The top 1% of students don't only optimize how they study, they also optimize when they study. One of the biggest mistakes I see people do is that they'll stay up on the weekends and then sleep in because they've earned it after a long week. This might sound extreme, but the top 1% of students, they sleep and wake up at the same time every single day, regardless if it's a weekday or a weekend. Imagine you sleeping in on a weekend and waking up at like 11 a.m. But then another guy, he wakes up at 6 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays and he gets straight to work. By the time you wake up, you could have already finished three hours or four hours of studying. Now imagine that twice a week for the whole academic year. Imagine how many more hours he'll have over you. Who do you think is going to be part of the top 1% now? Studying in the morning is one of the quickest fixes you can implement to boost your grades. And that's just because you're more refreshed in the morning. Think about it. Every action that requires your brain will make your brain a bit more tired. So if you study as soon as you wake up, when your brain is completely refreshed, compared to if you study at like 5 p.m. after you've already used up your brain, which studying session do you think will be more efficient? And the top 1% don't only focus on how and when they study, they also focus on their lifestyle. They design it to make it support them. Think of two athletes. One of them focuses only on his training. When he steps on the training ground, everything is flawless. His technique is great, he puts in hard work, he puts in the hours. But when he goes home, he just eats junk food and doesn't get enough sleep. And then the second athlete, maybe he doesn't train as hard, but he still trains hard. But when he goes home, his diet is perfect and he sleeps really well. In a couple of years or even months, who do you think will be the better athlete? It will be the second one because his lifestyle supports him. Becoming a top 1% student is not only about studying. Everything you do, whether it's active or passive, will have some sort of impact on you as a student. The quality and quantity of sleep will determine how your brain recalls and stores information. The diet you eat will determine how much energy you have, which you can then use to study. This is probably the most important takeaway of this whole video. Because the lifestyle you build that supports you becoming a top 1% student, that lifestyle you can maintain and use in any point in the future. Whether you're in uni or you want to build a business or you want to become an athlete or you want to achieve anything huge, that lifestyle, that lifestyle will support you no matter what. If you want to know how to get good sleep, read a book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Now finally, the top 1% of students, they make sacrifices that 99% of people aren't willing to make. They don't spend hours scrolling through Instagram and TikTok because they know that these habits, they ruin their attention spans and they waste time. I know it's quite hard, but our end goal as top 1% students should be to have Instagram and TikTok completely deleted. Unless, of course, it's for business reasons. Me personally, I don't have TikTok downloaded, so I never use it. But for Instagram, it's a different story.
Now, of course, I'm not delusional. I understand that some people, they need to talk to their friends and family so they can't completely delete Instagram. And I'm one of those people, which is why I decided to completely delete the app. And whenever I want to check my DMs or just check some accounts quickly, I just go on the web browser. And the reason I do this is because Instagram, they don't really invest into the web browser. They just care about the app. They assume that most people will just use the app. Why this is important is because if they're not investing in it, then they're not optimizing it to become as attention grabbing as possible. There are literally people that are hired by Instagram that study the best ways to grab your attention and maintain it for as long as possible. They channel most of their resources into the app, not the web browser, which is why when I started using the web browser instead of the app, my screen time on Instagram got cut in half. The top 1% of students don't only sacrifice social media, they also sacrifice any other bad habits that will negatively affect their studying. An example, like I said before, is a bad diet and staying up late, but also things like going for a night out and smoking and playing video games. The list is endless. If you implement everything I told you, then you're on track to become a top 1% GCSE or A-level student.